Robert Faringo of DocSports.com here yet again with Nolan Patrick of Strike Point Sports, bringing you your weekly NBA handicapping extravaganza. Uh, I feel pretty happy and pretty fortunate right now. I mean, I'm talking to the hottest NBA handicapper on the planet, pretty much. Uh, Nolan here is 15 and four. That's a 79% run for you guys keeping track at home for plus 5,100 over his last 19 NBA plays. They've beaten the books for 13 of 17 winning nights. They made $4,000 in the last eight days. And Nolan, and I know you're still probably a little bit salty about this. All this happens despite losing a seven unit play yesterday with Denver. Six unit winner on Philadelphia who won outright. That close to just erupting for another plus 1300 day and really taking it into the into the stratosphere. But uh, I, I mean, you're seeing the board pretty well right now. What can you say? Yeah, you know, it's it's we're very fortunate we've been inside of a lot of these series. We've just had a really good feel. And going into yesterday, the favorites had been rolling. The favorites had hit six in a row, and the favorites had been winning easily. It wasn't even close. You know, we're doing we we were jumping on the old school zigzag. We're just taking the favorites because teams are just really solid at home. They're playing well in front of their home. Fans. They're doing, they're taking advantage of mismatches. And, uh, you know, we're really fortunate that we've been scored well and uh, doing what, we, you know, we're supposed to be doing. We have been zigging and zagging, haven't we? I think I saw mm -hmm. a stat that uh, through the second round games, teams that lost game one at home in the NBA had won game two 15 straight times in the NBA playoffs. I think they're 15 and 0 if they lose game 1 coming back and winning game 2. I mean, there's nothing more that needs to be said. If a team loses at home in game 1, the desperation that they play with in game 2, uh it's going to be a blowout. And to your point about the favorites, a lot of these games haven't been close in a way. No. We had to we had to sweat out that Denver bet yesterday because that was a 5 point 5 point game, but most of these bets have been pretty much stress-free. You're either won right. big or you lost big. Uh, do you expect to see that trend continue, or do you feel like games are going to tighten up? Because it's just a matchup thing. It's just a matchup thing, and if teams are hitting threes or doing this or doing that, uh, or do you expect as these series get deeper that the games are going to tighten up and the value is going to shift to the underdog? I think it really depends matchup by matchup. I think that Knicks Heat series is going to be an absolute battle of the entire time we see it. I, I I know Miami, you know, when they win, they've won easily and they really have made the Knicks look cool. But when we did this, you know, the videos a couple of times ago, I stated that I thought that the series two to two when they leave Miami, and I still fully believe that. I think that's going to be a bad. I think the Warriors and Lakers. In the end, I think the Lakers win this one uh, six games to two. And I, I hate to say that because, you know, it's it's the Warriors and they can surprise him off for 50 when he needs to. I think the Celtics win the next two, two games in that series, four games to two. Um, and I'm careful what I say about the Suns and Nuggets because we need to see what's going to happen. Which, if he gets suspended, it would be an absolute travesty. But I want to hold my tongue there. But I think we're still going to see, like, I think Philly in the next game. Boston's a seven-point favorite. I think they roll. I, You know, the Lakers, um, you know, are, are going to win four games. So it's going to be, I think we're still going to see some blowouts. Okay, there you have it, folks. You're done. He just gave you uh, your play for the next week. It's all, it's all over. So, yeah, you did say that the, <laughs> that the next series is going to be two to two. That, yeah, you, you said that last Wednesday, okay, before yeah. they've even played game three. So, I think Miami's going to win. Then I think the Knicks are going to come back and win game two. I'm trusting that you're, that you're sticking by that. I, I don't like the Knicks to come out of that series. When I look at the Knicks, uh, as my daughter says, they're an NPC. Uh, they are a non-player character in the in the nba playoff battle they they just they just strike me as the type of team that's just you know they're not final boss material uh let's let's put it that way they're just a team that 
much better teams have to overcome in order to get there. Uh, I We both are in agreement about the Lakers coming into this series. We felt like they were a little bit, just a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit better than, than the Warriors, considering how Golden State has played. Never count out Golden State. They certainly don't look like like a juggernaut. So that's tonight's game. Now, again, I want to get back to Philly, Boston. Uh, you and I were texting this weekend after game three, which I was surprised that Boston did what they did to Philadelphia in game three. I was also surprised at the spread. Apparently, uh, your buddy of a buddy of a buddy who said that, yeah. <laughs> we're listening to that said that Philadelphia was going to be a home underdog in game three. And I said, that's preposterous. That's exactly what they were. They were an underdog in game in game three and game four, I mean, were you surprised by that? Did you think that that was a little, a little disrespectful to Philadelphia? Did you think that number was right on? I mean, I know Boston won the game, game three, uh, but what's your take on on where these spreads are coming in in this series? It was surprising. Um, you know, it, it was surprising to see that Philly wasn't given the respect deserved when they're a home team. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe they listened to this video. And they, that we that I think that Doc Rivers is a huge loser and he doesn't ever deserve to be favored. You know, um, but this this I feel like this series is ripe for the and we've been pretty fortunate that we've nailed it right on the head. We were on Philly in game, game one, went out, and then we jumped right back to Boston in game two because it's just fantastic coming off and against a spread loss or a. The Celtics are seven and zero against the spread, and their last seven games following it against the spread loss, and six and zero, and their last six games following a straight up loss, and they're I, I believe hundreds in the next game, and we'll be on Boston there. Um, I you know I just even though I think the points, the Celtics just have a way of bouncing back when they lose, and if you take a look at the two games that Philly won. James Harden is averaging 40-some-odd points in those two games. He's not going to do that going into Boston this time. I mean, I think the Celtics win. And then uh, we uh, we actually talked about this, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think the Celtics win easily in the game. And then I think the Celtics eke out a series-clinching victory. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I could see it going seven, but I don't think it's going to. I mean, let's be honest. If James... Harden misses that three-pointer late yesterday. Boston's going home up 3-1 in, in this series. Right. They they really, to me, clearly look like the best team playing. That's not to say that they're going to win the championship. Injuries happen. You know, Jalen Brown could, could mm-hmm. put to knee or something like that. that. That stuff happens. But it's been a little bit surprising how how much better they've looked than Philadelphia. I know the series is 2-2. Two to two. I, I do. But – it's also surprising how James Harden could look so inept in game three and come back and be yeah. amazing in game four. But to your point, you know, when, when you were on Boston in games two and game three, you said about James Harden, you know, he pulled, he pulled his trick once. He's not, he's not going to do it again. He did do it again in game four, but you yeah. can't count on James Harden taking 75% of his shots and scoring 45 right. points every game. That's just, that's not a recipe for, for beating the Celtics. I think they have just too much firepower. No, and in the other game, you know, I thought that Denver would win game four. I thought that they would be up three to one. I still think that they're much better than Phoenix. This Devin Booker, look, man, he's he's legit. Okay. I mean, that guy is is awesome and he is he's kind of playing like it. Denver did, had, didn't really have an answer for him in Phoenix. I personally think that Jokic is going to get suspended. I think he should get suspended. I, I don't think it's ridiculous. You can't put, can't put your hands on fans, man. You can't put you can't push the fans, whether it's the right. owner or not. he didn't need to go into the stands to grab that ball. There was there was no need for it. It was completely unnecessary. It was completely unprompted. And yeah, I think it's weak. I think the guy flopped. You know, oh, somebody put his hand on. I understand all that. It doesn't matter. He didn't need to go over there to get the ball. And you can't push a fan. Like you can't you can't do that. So I'm expecting him to get suspended for that game. And I'm really interested to see how Denver is going to react to that. I also felt like that, that was a big turning point in that game last night. I don't know how much of that you were watching, but I really felt like Denver had them right where they wanted them and something snapped too emotionally in Phoenix and they went all out 
the rest of that game. And Denver could just kind of never regain that, that kind of killer instinct that I felt like they had uh, uh, up until that point. So Wednesday, or excuse me, Tuesday's games, two underdogs. Do you think that both favorites cover again, or are one of those underdogs going to be on your radar? Assuming right now that Jokic plays. Well, <laughs> just, just to go back real quick. So you're saying Jokic didn't need to go into the stands. Any of our fans or, old, or, or older fans out there listening to the two of us. So he pulled what you're telling me when Jeter caught the fly ball on the third baseline, but continued to run and then died. Ivan, it's so, not the same sport. It's not the same sport. <laughs> it's like he's making a play on the ball. Jogi could have <laughs> sat down and waited for the refs to go get the basketball. Like this is what they did. Yeah. They were going to take the basketball and run away, and the game was going to was going <laughs> to stop. Like what, what yeah. was that? Was this the same yeah, so, ball? Like he had to jump over <laughs> the fence and get the ball. That's great. So right now, I see Denver is minus five. Um, you know, so I believe that that's aligned with Jokic playing. Uh, I might really take a long, hard look at, at, at our theory of big older if Jokic doesn't play. Um, mm-hmm. But one thing, there's another thing that we talked about, and there were two guys coming into this playoffs that I just said I do not like and I never liked. And we have discussed both of them at length. One is Doc Rivers, not going to be on, on Doc Rivers. And the other one is Chris Paul. Chris Paul has two straight games, and lo and behold, the Suns win both. I know they were both in Phoenix. I know they were both in Phoenix. But I, there's something to be said when that guy, I just feel like he is a curse to his team. I really, I when you said, do I like any of the underdogs on Tuesday? I do not. I do not. I will be on Boston. I think Boston wins that game by double figures. And I will be on Denver if Jokic plays. I'll Denver if Jokic plays. If Jokic doesn't play, I might take a long look at that over. <laughs> Get on that over. I kind of would like to see what Denver looks like without him at this stage of the playoffs. I mean, it right. obviously would just be the Jamal Murray show. And basically, yeah. you just clear everybody out and just let Jamal Murray and Devin Booker play one on one. I I watch that for for forty eight minutes. Yeah. Um, I, don't they go up and down team more? Team. Yes, don't they? they will be much. They will be much more up and down. And again, you have to think yeah. that they're going to play with a chip on their shoulder a little bit. Some of those role players, some of those second teamers, are going to get that burst of energy. And, you know, a guy like Caldwell Pope, like, I don't know. There's just, there's guys that will step up and pump in 15, 20 points that, that you're not expecting it from. Uh, you know, Joe can handle the ball a lot, takes a lot of shots. That's a lot of shots that will be dispersed around other people. You know, might see a big Michael Porter game. Might see a big Aaron Gordon game. I mean, Denver has several mm-hmm. guys that are capable of going off for 30 points. So, right now, I kind of hope that he does get get suspended so all right we're gonna cut this one short we will be back wednesday to see how we did with some of these predictions i mean no one stay stay hot man keep uh keep keep cranking it you're on a hell of a run right now and hopefully you will keep that going uh if any of you watching want to take advantage of straight point sports amazing nba run uh down in the comment section or excuse me down in the summary section below take advantage of that free 60 dollar link down there that's 60 dollars that you can use same as cash for any handicapper, any sport, any package that you want. Daily picks are only $30. You can get two free uh, daily packages of my, maybe my MBA, no one's MBA. Uh, maybe you want baseball, NHL action, whatever sport you want. We have you covered at Doc Sports over 50 years in the sports information industry. We will see you Wednesday. He is Nolan Patrick. I am Robert Faringo. Carpe diem and good luck.